Hey there, folks. So I don't normally do videos on uh, just like brand new shells or plastics or anything unless they add something to another video that I've already done, like um, like an IPS mod or some you know a new shell comes out that's specially made for them. But I'm gonna make an exception today. This is a uh, new shell from Extreme Rate, as you can probably tell by the total of the video, um, and it is for SP. Uh, now I have worked with Extreme Rate in the past to make videos. They how it usually works is they'll they'll send me something, ask me to make a video on it, and then I make a video on it. That's that's all there is to it. There's no exchange of currency or anything like that. They're not they're not reviewing the video. They're just you know trying to get extra content out there. This is not that. I saw this and just bought it because of who I am as a person. Uh, but here's the shell. We'll get into that in just a second. Here's what you get when you order one of these things. Uh, nice small little SP sized box. That aside, Gamer Manuel. I believe their uh, older cards said something totally different, but I don't have one on hand. Wonder what I do with it. Anyway, um, extreme rate. These are actually pulled out instead of just business cards now. Uh, neat touch. I dig it. Clearly going for some certain styling there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna not do any of that. I don't think that should be a problem. Um, though, fun fact, they did actually warranty one of my shells. Uh, quick tangent. I had done a video a while back on this switch. I had put the uh, new front shell on it and it had cracked in quite a few different places. No, 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 no. Come on. Right there, right by my thumb. Uh, just a regular switch shell. This also wasn't sponsored, but there's cracks all over and I genuinely don't like I, I haven't done anything to warrant cracks all over this thing uh, but they did replace the shell uh, I contacted them about it explained what was going on and they're like oh yeah sure uh, we'll just send you a new one and they did and I just haven't done anything about it so um, that brief tangent is to say that they do actually have warranty on their stuff and they do honor the warranty I just had to send them proof of purchase, which was literally just my Amazon order number. Uh, but anyway, anyway, paid for this out of pocket. Here's what you get with the shell. You get some screwdrivers that I hear one of them is actually halfway decent, but the other is kind of garbage. Uh, I guess we'll try it out and see. Uh, get quite a bit of screws for the SP. We get a brand new set of black-ish buttons. They're like a dark gray, I guess. Um, all the little metal bits. So we have this screw. I have no idea what that fully threaded one is for, but the uh, halfway threaded one is probably for the battery compartment. And then that square nut. And we have three hinge axles. I don't know why. They should only give two, but sure. Um, two full sets of uh, LNR springs. Ooh, I like this. Most shells don't do this. Most shells don't come with that little filter uh, that goes between the speaker and the shell. Um, we'll talk more about what that is specifically later, but it's, it's a neat thing to include. Uh, here we go. Noise, shiny, custom sticker. It says Extreme Rate PRG Revive True or something. I don't know. Revive Gaming Nostalgia. Um, it's obviously not stock, but it's designed to look stock. You might notice there's no trademarked logos on this. Uh, which is actually something that I have been pushing for, so I'm really pleased to see Extreme Rate follow through. Uh, I wasn't pushing them specifically, but um, it's nice to see that at least someone's listening. They're not putting the trademark logos on this stuff. They put their own logos instead. I like that. I think that's a good thing. If you want your Game Boy to look stock, well, the stock shell had logos. There you go, there's your Nintendo logo and then your Game Boy Advance SP logo if it wasn't covered in tape. Um, it, I, I don't... I don't know, I, I think it's bad juju to put someone else's trademarked logo on your stuff, and so I am very happy to support people that don't do that. Uh, also, you get some new button membranes. And one thing I should point out, these are Extreme Rate's own mold. Like, these aren't the generic aftermarket button and membrane sets that you can get. These are something that Extreme Rate has come up with. 
and they actually do sell them separately if you want them in different colors like gold for example uh, but it should all be the same mold so that's what we're going to be trying out and here is the shell itself Uh huh? Oh, this is so good looking. So I, I'm fully aware how gaudy gold looks, but I just can't help myself. Look at that. So one of the things that uh, they're doing with this new shell is the inside mold of the top is modified such that you see how this side goes all the way up to the top of the screw posts. This side's a little bit flush because it's modified for um, IPS kits and you've got an extra cutout here as well. I think it should go pretty nicely. Uh, one of the major differences is they didn't bother including that pill cutout for the emblem, which again, I'm totally fine with. Um, in the case of the SP, it's a little bit weird because that's just a cutout. They didn't have to include an emblem itself. They could have just included like a little extreme rate jewel that would fit in there and then let people put their own Nintendo emblem in. Um, so it's not the best compromise, I think. Uh, they did remove the Game Boy logo from the battery cover. That's a okay. I don't know about you guys, but I usually put stickers. That's usually put stickers over that anyway, so. Um, no big deal. And then everything else is pretty much as you'd expect. You have labels on power on, power off, start, select, and then volume. And, and then along the bottom here for the um, ports here, for the charge port. And you get all the other stuff you'd expect to get with the uh, SP shell. So I guess let's jump into it. See what happens, eh? <laughs> I'm so stoked. Okay, so here is going to be tonight's donor. It's just... Uh, the literal only SP I have in my collection that is a <laughs> standard, quote unquote standard, IPS kit and an aftermarket shell. So that's what we're getting. Um, I am extraordinarily stoked for this thing because SPs have never had a good uh, regularly available aftermarket shell. So the um, the first shells, more or less, are pretty much what this is in. Uh, there are several different specific iterations of this shell. This is one of the better ones, but I mean, you look at the speaker holes, they're not all centered and they're certainly not all round. Uh, the text, it's actually pretty good here, but sometimes it's a little funny. Uh, if you look at it from an angle, you can see it's not exactly flat. Uh, like if you look at the way the light's bouncing off this base plate, um, you know, you've got weird indents by the text. I don't know. It's Low, low quality injection molding. It's especially prevalent on the sides. Uh, you can see it just, it just looks lumpy. Um, the text isn't the greatest. There's tons of random scratching. And yes, this shell does have some wear and tear on it. You can tell on the cover there, but that this specific scratching has always been there. Um, I'll have to take my word for it, I guess, or look at an older video when I reshelled this console for the first time. Uh, this shell has had multiple consoles in it, so it might appear in multiple videos, but anyway, um, stickers aren't great. It's overall the fit and fi finish just kind of sucks. I don't know if you can hear the noise it makes when you open it, just plastic rubbing on plastic. It's, it's not great. In fact, the hinges don't do much to lock it in place. That's just the plastic not fitting well against itself. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked and we got these um, nice new clear shells, new mold, new plastic injection process, much higher quality. I was uh, head over heels with them uh, until they all started cracking. Um, well, not all of them started cracking. This is a bad example because this is clearly a modified shell, uh, but there's a lot of reports, especially around the hinge area in some of the clear shells of cracking. Now, I've heard that they've mostly fixed that issue. Um, and since I bought like new sets of shells, I haven't had that come up. But 
if you're not careful and you crank your um, battery cover down a little bit too tight, you can still crack it. So it's worth keeping in mind that they are still brittle, just hopefully not as brittle. Uh, but anyway, between the fitment issues of the original shells and the brittleness of the uh, replacement shells, I'm hoping I'm hoping Extreme Rate has found a happy medium here. So I will we'll try that out. Let's also try out these new screws, screwdrivers. If I can dump these out without making a mess. And yeah, here's tonight's donor. Just regular SP with, um, I think, one of the one chip IPS kits, the 9380s. I don't know what specifically is in here. I don't remember. And this thing has been reshelled since I did the video, anyhow. But let's get to it. We've got a tri point, tri wing. I always get the two confused. All right, these screwdrivers are actually pretty decent. I'm all right with it. I mean, they're not going in my toolbox once all this is said and done, um, but I don't hate them. They seem to grip the screws pretty darn well, which is a lot more than can be said about the uh, those older red-handled drivers uh, that other shells ship with. That comes off. You're supposed to flip it over so that the top is up, and then you can pull that off. Uh, the reason being, the um, power switch is supposed to stay in the bottom shell. If it stays in the top shell, I mean, you won't lose anything, and if you're taking it apart, it's not that big of a deal. But um, for reassembling purposes, uh, you, you need it in the bottom shell. You don't want to lose that square nut for the battery retainer, and you don't want the uh, shoulder buttons to fall out. Um, in this particular case, we're reshelling, so it doesn't matter if this stuff comes out, because Got to come out any, or actually no, Extreme Rate came with all this stuff, so we won't we won't reuse any of the old stuff. Uh, oh, probably need a soldering iron. Actually, I don't know if we need a soldering iron. I just remembered there's a much easier way to do these kits. Yeah, it's solder. Oh. This is a TV out kit, so yeah, we'll need the soldering iron. Okay. I'll show the easier way, though, just in case. Put that in there. So, getting these rubber things out is always a pain in the butt. Um, in the aftermarket shells, it is significantly easier than OEM shells, but my process is the same. Uh, just take a plastic spudger. It is important that it is plastic and not something like a screwdriver, uh, something that's metal, because with a metal tool, you will mar up that opening and you will mar up the uh, little rubber pad that we're trying to remove. Um, there is no ifs. If you use a metal screwdriver, you will mar one or more likely both. Uh, but the process is just take a plastic spudger, try and work it in along the side. If you need to, you can kind of put pressure on the rubber pad to reveal as much an opening as you can slip your tool into. Um, once you've got it slipped in, just try and work your way around the periphery while trying to get it deeper. Um, the end goal is you want it at least under the rubber, and if not, you know, if you keep circling like that, you'll be able to work it out. Um, now, the aftermarket ones, like I said, are quite a bit easier. There's no adhesive usually unless you do that yourself, so it's really just pressure fitting them in. They're also significantly less brittle than the OEM ones, but they do have a habit of falling out on their own. So, not the best. All right. Oh, 
Oh, I forgot to take off the hinge cover while I was under there. That's gotta come off first. So I'm doing this in kind of a weird order, um, but I just wanna show the easy way of getting the um, uh, IPS kit installed without having to hold it at a weird angle and try and solder at the same time. And it will work for the TV out kits too, you just have to do it ahead of time. Okay. And the only reason I'm putting the screw back in is just to hold things in place. I don't want to accidentally drop it and rip the ribbon or something. usually sticks to the back cover. It's annoying, but it is what it is. So, the idea here is we can undo this side of the ribbon. And unfortunately I ran that under the board, because of course I did. That's okay. Pull that out. And then, uh, you know, if I didn't have this soldered down, which I'm going to have to desolder, might as well do that right now. And the spudger is just to keep the board off the screen while I'm soldering because I've ruined screens before that way and I don't want to do it again. And pull the ground off. Before pulling the other one, I want to mark this thing. I'm just going to retin it. And so the easiest way to mark them is to literally just tie a knot in there. And my method is I just tie a knot in the ground wire. That way they don't get mixed up. And that's it. And then we'll desolder the AV wire. Retin that because that one got nasty too. And then, we can lift out this whole module as one, and then come around here on the back, and then lift this whole thing out, and, uh, whoops, and just get all this stuff down there. parts everywhere okay and it's easier if you don't have the uh, loop in there so when you're installing for the first time but even for removal just take the loop out to make the ribbon straight and then you can just pull it straight through ta-da and then you don't have to worry about holding it at a weird angle to solder that brightness control you just set on your desk, solder it, and uh, Bob Gianti. Now, we will need the hinges out of this. So I have a uh, hinge removal tool that I made a long time ago and made a video on. They're easily 3D printable if you have a good enough 3D printer. It's a very small part though. Uh, so I typically just order them from a printing service. I think I ordered like 30 of them for five bucks or some junk. They're stupid cheap. But just jam that in there and it'll pop the hinge right out. You don't have to do any uh, sketchy shit with a screwdriver. The uh, left hinge is a little bit more difficult because you gotta pop it loose. Okay. It didn't pop out as much as it usually does, but you gotta pop it loose and then you gotta slide it out. Uh, but once the latches are released, sliding it out is a lot easier. He says as he pushes with almost all of his might. Um, yeah, it's pretty simple. 
if you're un if you're taking the hinges out of an OEM Game Boy, which is what these were originally, the right hinge has those white clips on it, and the left hinge, can grab it, has black clips on it. They are directional. Keep that in mind. The only thing the extreme rate shell doesn't come with is uh, replacement hinges, it appears. Which is kind of a disappointment, but oh well. Oh, it doesn't work with these. This one's not an OEM hinge. I don't know why. Oh, neither is that one. What the hell? Okay. I guess I can't reuse my hinges. I mean, it's not a huge deal for me because I have a ton of these things, but still a bit of a disappointment. Let me grab that one. That way I have a matched pair. Not that it makes a huge difference, but satisfies me a little bit more. The um, the little hinge covers here, they just slide onto the hinge. Da, da, da. You pop it in. Uh, these are directional again. Black goes on the left, white goes on the right. Uh, you see these two little channels going down the side. Those go towards the front and back. And you have to install them while the shell is open. Otherwise, it won't work. These little covers have uh, like two chambers in them. One of them is hollow, and then the other is where the uh, hinge part slides in. If I can get this just like that. Uh, the problem is the uh, generic aftermarket ones combine those two chambers into one big chamber so that the uh, hinges they can use can have a rivet on that uh, clip and so unfortunately you need a little bit extra clearance for the aftermarket hinges which I have done this before you can just drill that out in the middle and as long as you're careful and don't go all the way through it will work but hella sketchy don't recommend it I'd recommend just getting the proper hinges this one in particular has a little bit of flashing on the edge. Um, oh, it looks like I can just scratch that off. I was going to say it might be necessary to get the flush cutters, but I think we'll be good. Alright, that snaps in. That feels good. It'll feel better once there's some weight behind it. But we will start with this. that through. Oh, the wire with the knot in it doesn't fit. They uh, changed the tolerances. That's uh, kind of annoying. I mean, it's not a big deal, I can just untie the knot, but, or even cut a bigger hole. But I guess just keep that in mind. do is I'm going to slip that through and then tie the knot again. The other one. 
come through. And if all goes well, everything should be seated nicely. Cool. So before I have to put tension on that ribbon, I'm just going to reassemble the bottom half. And I'm going to use all of the new parts, or at least I'm going to try. Point of using a Ziploc if you have it sealed shut with a sticker. All right, so the filter goes in. This is an acoustic filter. The purpose of it is to prevent you gathering debris and detritus on your speaker cone itself. Um, I don't know if you've ever noticed, you know, you take apart a stock SP and the speaker's always perfectly clean unless there's like water damage or something. Uh, but you take apart like an old Game Boy Color and the speaker, even Game Boy Advance, is just covered with random debris. That's the por porpoise, that filter. Keep that kind of junk out. I suppose you can omit it if you really hate the look of it, but... In a non-clear shell, it is dumb, yes, it is dumb to just omit it entirely. We need the light pipe. There it is. The organization of stuff in the bags is kind of weird, but sure. All right, with everything in there, everything all soldered up nicely, jam a screw in here. Sure, my wire routing isn't. There we go. Alright, so I got things kind of weird. And I really wish they had sorted the screws, but sure. It looks like we have two different colors of screws and two different lengths of each color. So, at least they're color-coded and, and length-appropriate. Alright, so these short, darker-colored screws should have the crosshead on them. I say crosshead because they're not Phillips, they're JIS. So that's these guys. versus the lighter colored ones have the uh, Y bit on them. Uh, but so too do the longer, darker colored ones. Odd choice, but all right. I'm also fairly certain we have tons of extra screws. One, two, three, four, five. They didn't give us the right screw heads if we want to match OEM spec. But that's quite alright. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I'm going to use the three, three of the short crosshead ones to secure the motherboard. Oh, and once I have that secured, I need to go on a quick tangent. I just noticed something dumb that Extreme Rated has done, and I don't agree with it at all. Okay, once those are in, 
Open it, double check I didn't poke through those screws, which I didn't. There's that weird lump in my shell, but that doesn't match up with the screw, so I think that's just a problem with the finish that I'm only just noticing now. Anyway, problem I noticed. Extreme Rate includes a um, volume knob with their button set. So that is the one that came with the shell, and if I pull open the other button set, don't really want to mix this stuff up save this for later. Don't want to end up with extra parts getting confused. Um, you can see that there is a volume slider with that button set that I ordered as well. These volume sliders aren't replaceable. Um, the part itself, the little volume potentiometer, that's from the factory like that. Got these things you can see these aren't SP volume sliders but they are DS volume sliders uh, and they did work the exact same way you can see that slider is part of the literal part that uh, was getting installed onto the console what I mean to say is you know I mean obviously they they in installed that from the factory so it is technically removable to someone with enough dedication um, however in most consoles Oh, and of course, I've got one that it'll come off if I slip it out. Go figure. Uh, in most consoles, they do not come off. In fact, instead, they break off. And then you have no volume control whatsoever. So, all that to say, give yours a tug, a very, very light tug, and if it comes off, it comes off. If it does not come off, don't, don't pull any harder. You're just going to break it. And if it does come off, the new ones fit terribly. It'll work, but the fit is god-awful. Okay, we're going to stick with the OEM one. Again, these typically do not come off. I have seen SPs where they do come off, like this one, and I have seen SPs where they break off. I have never seen any in between. It either falls off on its own, or it breaks off. That's it. You, you just. I, I feel like I'm going on a tangent, you know, ranting unnecessarily, but, you know, if it stops one person from breaking their SP, then I guess I've done my job. All right. So this will drop in thereabouts. Got to reinstall that twist, but I want to twist it around these wires. Get a nice cleaner look, and then might as well run it back under. Whoops! Is that right? No. Yeah. I had it right, just not enough twists. The hell? Alright, sorry, random noise distracted me. Alright, let's resolder these. not solder with the board on the screen. There is a somewhat generous air gap in my case. Done with the soldering iron. This is much easier to do in the other order, by the way, which you will discover if you're installing it at the same time as reshelling your console. 
that I am discovering as I reshell a console that already had one. Also, do not recommend pushing directly down on that connector like I just did. Um, it can cause damage to the screen, but in my case I didn't really have an option. Um, but I also know what I'm doing most of the time. Alright, we can drop that in there. It's not fitting. Stream rate. Thought it was IPS ready. Oh, there we go. It'll go. It's just tight. Alright, now we need more short screws. I'm going to use the Y bit screws, the short ones. I'm just getting them started. I'll come back and tighten them down. I don't like these screwdrivers for this. They're very difficult to grip. And it does require a little bit of force to set these. Also probably worth mentioning, um, this is self-threading screws into plastic. You don't need to send them, you know? They're they're going to be fine. You just need to get them snug. You don't have to tighten them. Until your screwdriver starts slipping. That's not how this works. Oh, you know what? That feels really good. With the weight in the top screen. That's good. Alright, now we need to install that means backing out these screws because I forgot to do that earlier. And yeah, we'll send one of these long ones. The uh, hinge cover, let me get that flipped up, is a long screw, or is supposed to be, and is usually a crosshead. And this is one of the downsides to installing things backwards, is you still gotta hold it at an awkward angle with things plugged in. Plus it's just easier to solder than it is to, uh, or easier to s install a screw than it is to solder. Alright, we're at the finish line, almost done. Battery door is a little tight. 
bet that has a lot to do with the coating. I suspect the uh, other ones won't be as tight. One of my initial complaints about this shell was that it only came in like four colors. This gaudy ass gold, white, uh, soft touch, by the way, not just not just the white plastic that this one is underneath the gold. Um, like a wave print, and then there's something else, some other horrifying print. Uh, but it just turns out that for the first few days, they only had those four shells listed. And now they have quite a few more options. Uh, da, 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 I guess that goes there. But which side is the question? That's not right, is it? Oh, no, no, I had it backwards in my head, okay. So, on the uh, metal shielding, there are two sides. One of them has a film on it, and then the other is the uh, inside of this bend. The sticker gets applied to the inside side. It is for insulation purposes, and judging by my old shell, not strictly necessary, but probably still a good idea. And then remove the film. screwed that in. I guess we'll use the last two remaining uh, crosshead screws. OEM Game Boy consoles use JIS, and yes I know, I'm already fully aware that I've already said that in this video. Um, I'm calling these crosshead because I don't think they're JIS. I don't think they're Phillips either. I think there's some unholy combination of the two. Uh, oh, real quick, before going any further, let's double check that that mixes and matches with OEM. Or at least, if it mixes and matches with this aftermarket shell, it'll mix and match with the OEM, because the aftermarket ones fit OEM too. Ah, that is good. It does. At least the bottom does. I didn't check the rest and I kind of already assembled it. Anywho, let's do the shoulder buttons now. We've got two different types of springs. These are directional. One goes on the left, one goes on the right. Um, you can grab it, hold it towards the straight leg so that the curved leg is sticking out and try and place it in that cutout of the button. If the leg doesn't line up, you've got the wrong spring. So just grab the other button, we can hold it in there, insert the leg, and then insert the button, and then seat the leg. Just like that. Except you gotta put the button in the right side. <laughs> Pay a little bit more attention. do the same thing with the other side. I don't know why they sent so many springs. There are two extra springs, but I don't know, save them I guess. Maybe find a use for them, maybe not. Or you can just reuse your OEM ones. And then the square nut, usually there are two sides to this thing. Uh, on one side you have that little chamfer and on the uh, screw hole itself, and then on the other side there is no chamfer. The chamfer side goes down. And it's not the end of the world if you got it in backwards, it just means that your battery door screw is not gonna 
screw in as easily. Once it gets started though, it should be fine. And that's just pressure fit in there. Power, get that in the bottom. It doesn't matter if you have it set to on or off, just make sure the Game Boy and the Switch are set to the same thing. And place that down. And hang on, my fitment is kind of funny. Determining, I'm trying to determine if it's the shell or if it's like those wires. Because if it's the shell, I will criticize them for that. But if it's the wires, that's my problem. nothing in the way. I'm not sure what would be not fitting. Just double check that the wires are... Yep, everything should be fine. You can see that gap between the bottom of the port and the bottom of the shell. I don't know what's going on there. It doesn't feel like the motherboard is not seated properly though. It could just be the shell. Especially since everything does go together. Oh, it does fit a lot better now. I don't know what the heck happened. Maybe I did have wires in the way. Alright. I'm going to use the long, darker colored screws four of them for the corners. Just getting them started so I can screw this thing at this angle without those falling out. Good lord, almost 50 minutes in and all I did was reshell an SP. Sorry guys. I know I like to talk, but Jesus. Alright, and then we'll use two of the short screws. One for the top. And one for the bottom. And then again, screw with the uh, threading up half of it. Because in the battery there is no circlip. So it is not a captive screw, but it'll go in there, no problem. Right, nearly there. Get all the fingerprints. Nope, oh, something just stuck to that. Figure out what that was and find it later. Alright. Yeah, it 
that's good. Oh, that looks so good on there. It'd be neat to have a sticker for there too. I mean, I, I have some, I can go grab one of these things, but my comment is it would be neat if uh, Extreme Rate included one. Ooh, nice. These are actually adhesive. Unlike the uh, generic aftermarket ones, don't have any adhesive. Oh, that screw's not even in all the way. Are any of them? Oh, maybe it is in all the way and the reflection is just screwing with me. Oh, okay. It was in all the way. Wait, no. Is that one in all the way? See, this one didn't seat, so maybe the screw isn't in all the way? I can't tell. It's seated there, fine. so bizarre. Alright, it came with two full sets of these uh, screen rubbers, which is kind of wasteful if it were anyone other than me. I will use them, but it's kind of weird that they are included. Oh man, even these screen rubbers are so much nicer. In hindsight, I made a poor decision to reshell the only other aftermarket Game Boy Advance SP shell. But God damn if that doesn't look good. Of course it's going to be a fingerprint magnet. I'm not even going to call that a con. I knew that going in. Any glossy chrome color is going to be like that. Okay. It does work, it's just kind of shitty. I think that's the SP, not the button, because I can feel it actuating just fine, even if it's not. Gotta press it kind of hard. I don't really like the buttons. I think they could have done a better job. Brightness is fine. You hardly ever press that. These buttons feel very, very recessed. Uh, so like when you press it down, it, it goes flush with the housing. I don't like that. They should still be a little bit proud. They're fine, to be clear, but could be better. I'm not sure if it's the membranes or the buttons themselves. So I guess let's, uh, let's do it big in and find out. It feels like the shell feels really good. I have mixed feelings on the buttons though. I'm also done with that screwdriver. Oh, that's awkward. Is it just that specific battery cover? It is. Yeah, so it's it's probably just the tolerances with the uh, gold chrome coating. Yours might be better than mine.
Yeah, the screwdrivers included. They're fine, but I don't know. I think they're a little bit small. They're kind of uncomfy to use. Like the actual tip of the screwdriver is perfectly fine though. And then we're going to try two things. First, yeah, it does not need to be assembled to get a feel for those. It'll be nice and easy to swap out some buttons. And conveniently, I already have some right on my desk. keep throwing this thing back together. All right, so I'm going to try the other, my old buttons, but with the new membranes. See if we can't figure out why it feels the way it feels. And my old buttons are black, whereas these are dark gray. I think my black buttons will look better anyhow. My old membranes are OEM membranes, so if that doesn't solve, if the buttons doesn't solve the problem, it's probably the membranes. give them the benefit of the doubt. There's my other button. Are you kidding me? I have everything but B? I had B. Maybe that's what stuck to my uh, cloth. Oh, that's a disappointment. I guess I'll be right back. All right, so yeah, earlier when I was cleaning with the microfiber, something clung to it and flew off my desk when I uh, moved it. It was indeed the B button. That in there. Three screws in. These feel heaps better. Uh, they still, they still don't feel great, but it's better. Um, I guess I'll hazard a guess and say don't use the buttons the extreme rate shell includes. The membranes may be fine. Now I'm gonna swap. I'm gonna do the opposite now and install the extreme rate buttons with OEM membranes. Yeah, that's the problem. The buttons are fine. 
It's the membranes that aren't great. Um, I think OEM buttons and OEM membranes is still the way to go, but the membranes are the weak link out of the two. So I am going to use OEM buttons with OEM or I actually don't think these are OEM buttons. I'm sorry. I think these are aftermarket buttons because um, they're black. I don't think there's an SP model that came with black buttons that I would have taken apart for the buttons. Because the pearl ones, the AGS 101s, I thought those. Wait, no. No, 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 no. Those came with light gray. Never mind. What the hell am I thinking of then? I don't know. Maybe there's some limited edition that came with black buttons. Not really the point. Yep, there we go. I'm happy with that. That feels a lot better. And now when we press the button, it doesn't sink all the way down into the housing. Cool. So that's that. I'm actually really pleased with this shell. Um, I'm not going to fully reassemble it because we're going to try something else. Uh, but before moving on to something that's tangentially related, but probably not relevant to most of you, I do want to talk a little bit about the finish. Uh, so I've been... I've been a fan of these cheesy ass extreme rate gold shells since I've known about them. Their first generation of shells um, was bad, quite frankly, and they've come a long way since. Uh, these first generation shells, the finish doesn't actually even fully cover the Game Boy. Like, there's just gaps at where the lens meets the rest of the thing. This shell itself, it feels like one of the generic ones that they just electroplated and you can tell that that's probably exactly what that is based off the Game Boy and Nintendo logos on there. Uh, these shells were garbage. You can't get these anymore, thankfully, uh, but they did make a new model and I didn't get the new one in gold, but this is what the new model looks like. Um, these are like the first generation shells. These are like the second generation cells, shells. And then we have like a two and a half generation shell, uh, which I actually will be doing a video on in a little bit. Um, it's basically the same as this thing, but uh, it has a few extra provisions in there for different IPS compatibility. And we'll review that, but you can see they took out the Game Boy logo and they took out the Nintendo logo. I think it looks great. And the finish on this was totally fine. Um, I think they fin fixed their finish problems or at least they never had finished problems with the chameleon color. This is their GBA shell in that gold chrome finish. Um, and this was a newer shell as well. So this would have been part of their Re Revive Tro project, which is what the chameleon Game Boy Color is. Um, the finish here is still a lot better than the Game Boy Color, but it does still have some of the same problems where the lens gap, you can see unfinished shell and that's kind of a disappointment but the SP doesn't have any of that anywhere as far as I can see uh, the single only complaint I have is that the top of the shell housing doesn't quite like it kind of bows out it's worse on the left side than it is the right side uh, I don't know if it's a fitment related thing, uh, like it says it's IPS ready, maybe there's a little bit more trimming that needs to be done, I don't know. But either way, it looks good, it's already scratched quite a bit from my handling alone, but look at that man, that's beautiful. 
I love it. I, I think it looks really clean without that logo there, actually. I'm digging it. Um, so yeah, that's more or less all I had to do with this shell. There are a few other things I want to cover while we're here, because I'm sure it's going to come up. Slate. How compatible is this thing with the slate? Let's find out. It should be fully compatible, no issues. But let's just double check. So this is not the final one, uh, but all of the critical dimensions should be identical. So we should be good. We'll find out. Oh, I lost my square nut. Okay. Ooh, I hadn't considered that. I'm going to have to try it without the shoulder buttons. Because I don't feel like waiting for the new ones to set. Uh, one of the things we have to do with the slate is we have to glue in shorter shoulder rods. But you don't want to do that. Oh, and while we're here, I guess let's try out the buttons too. Maybe the buttons feel better when it's not an extreme rate shell. Another set of screwdrivers, meh. And a whole bunch of screws. I guess they just really throw them in. All right. And more springs. That came with four, four springs as well, two sets. I'm not sure what's going on. Why they feel the need to ship four, but all right. Inside my buttons and membranes. And see, look, you gotta put the filter in. The finish on these buttons kind of concerns me. I don't know how well this is gonna work out. skip the brightness button because we don't use that in the slate and this SP does not have a removable cover so that's staying there we won't even be able to test that but if it fits like the other one did it doesn't fit very well at all Oh, that looks awful. They feel fine, though. There you go. Um, I don't, I don't like how they look, but <laughs> that's. I mean, looks on these buttons was always going to be pretty polarizing, so. <laughs> Odd that the buttons are totally fine when not in a extreme rate shell. But, all right, sure. Nope. Nope. 
nope, nope, nope. And this has to be trimmed to fit this specific slate. Because this slate has an overclock mod. Right there, that module. It fits just fine. Just gotta remove that support. Oh, that was just getting threaded into plastic. Okay, so the screw holes themselves are a little bit smaller than the other shells I've tested. And so it feels like the screws are going in, but they're really just being threaded into the plastic and you gotta actually send them a little bit further. But, there we go. Like the panel gap is pretty much perfect. I didn't screw in these top screws yet. Um, but there's not a whole lot I can do about that. These extreme rate bottoms actually work really well on the slate so far. Well, there you go. The more you know. Okay, guess we're not testing that game. Yeah, there might be some more tuning you can do uh, with different membranes with the buttons, but I don't know. It's just so weird that I didn't like how they fit in the OEM shell, but they fit perfectly fine. Or I say OEM, but in this case, I mean Extreme Rate. But Extreme Rate is their own OEM, so it's still technically correct. Um, no, it, it's just weird that I didn't like how the uncoated buttons fit in their their own shell but the coded buttons feel perfectly fine in the slate. Uh, I suppose the next best test would be to test the uncoded buttons in the slate, but quite frankly, I don't care about the uncoded buttons, so, so be it. Uh, but yeah, I'm using their coded buttons and the membranes, and like it feels fine. I'm happy with that. All right, well, I guess that's all I got. Um, let me know if you think this is the gaudiest looking slate you've ever seen. Uh, I will, <laughs> I'll throw some links in the description to all this stuff that I'm using, which is realistically just the uh, SP shell and the SP buttons, uh, but I'll throw a link to my slate as well if you guys are interested in that. There's, there's quite a bit of media out there already, at least from me, um, we're trying to get samples out to other people so we can get... Something that at least looks a little bit more objective. Uh, but, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty pleased. It, the shell fits an SP great, it fits my slate great, it looks great, it feels a hell of a lot better than that other aftermarket one I was using, even the hinge. I mean, it's still a little bit tight, but at least it's not making that awful grinding noise. You know, it feels nice and smooth. Um, the little rubber membrane, not membranes, uh, screw covers, they fit really well. Uh, they fit, they fit like OEM. I'm trying to get my camera to focus on it without focusing on the reflection, but you can see these aren't inset. Like they're, they're perfectly flush with the outside. This one's a little bit, um, proud actually, but these two are perfectly flush and these two are perfectly flush. I think that one has a screw that needs to get sent a little bit harder. Let's see if we can fix that. Alright. And yeah, removing them is just like OEM. There we go. Now that's fully seated. Oh, that's so much better. Now it's nice and flush. 
ชาดาไอ้ the only if I had to find if I had to find something to complain about only thing is like these little blips in the finish right here and then right here but honestly the rest of this is just me getting my greasy ass fingers all over it it's really good otherwise I'm digging it oh there's another one right there anyway that's all I got I'll catch you all next time um, oh and yeah like I said links in the description I'll also shove some links for uh, my videos on this stuff uh, and if I did a video on this one, I don't remember if I did, but if I did, there'll be a link. Till next time.